let's look a bit on the topic of uh, fence detection. And for me, fences in images or fences in, in general are composed of uh, lines, uh, or at least a, a set of parallel lines that have this uh, kind of structure. Some fences they go up and down, or others uh, in in some uh, kind of uh, uh, cross direction from top left to bottom right, or on the opposite. So this is uh, an example of, of a fence structure, and this structure has some interesting uh, properties, especially if you want to detect them. And if we need to have a computer to detect something for us, then it's uh, beneficial to tell it what to look for. And the first thing that comes to mind when I watch this is that the fence has a periodic structure. which means that if you look at uh, one point uh, on the fence, for instance, uh, the point up here, then we can move in a certain direction, maybe down here, and then we can see the exact same pattern again. And one step more, we can see the pattern again and so on. Um, and this can actually help us quite much when we want to, to locate uh, the structure in the image. But let's, uh, this kind of an analysis can be done in uh, 2D, but first to, to talk a bit more about how it actually works, let's take a, a look at the one dimensional example. So um, if we have a square wave that uh, is uh, plus one here, then goes to minus one, goes back again and then up here. I want to draw exactly two oscillations, uh, two periods, and we can draw the axis in, in a different color. So we have the y-axis and the x-axis is coming here, or, or the time axis, like this. So the wave here is a, a square wave and um, it goes from 0 to 2 pi. I chose this number um, to, to get some, some nice numbers to, to work with uh, afterwards. This square wave um, has a lot of corners and, and so on, but it can still be approximated by a sine wave or actually a sum of sine waves, where the first one will be looking something like this. So where all the peaks are located at at the same location as the um, as the tops of the, the square wave, and this is no perfect fit, but uh, it it's a better approximation than than what we have before. And if we allow to use uh, two sine waves added together, then we can get an even better approximation. So we will go up here, down, up, and then go up and down here again. And now the question is how to actually uh, locate these uh, or determine which sine wave should uh, does this uh, signal uh, consist of. And that can be done using the, the Fourier transform. And I assume you have seen it before but the uh, idea here is that you can say this uh, square wave, which is a function of time, is given as a sum of, um, of different sine waves. And in uh, this case, um, the equation would look like uh, 4 divided by pi multiplied with, and then a sine wave with the same frequency as given here. In this case, it will be a sine wave that oscillates twice during this um, duration from 0 to 2 pi. Therefore, it should be 2 times t. And then uh, the next term we need to add will not have the, the double the frequency, 
but it will have the triple the frequency, so it would be something like sine of 60. And then we need to multiply with uh, something uh, specific here. That would be one third. And we can actually take uh, one term more, which is one fifth sine of, and then it's five times this, so it would be 10 T. And I seem to be getting behind the other image. And we can add more elements uh, here, like that. Um, so this is a, a different way of, of describing um, the structure. And one thing that I note here is that we have a, a base structure with a frequency of uh, two, the, the two down here. But we also have some kind of repetitions or higher order terms to get the corners uh, straight of, of the structure, which will show up here as uh, three times the base structure and uh, five times the base structure and so on. And if we go from a one dimensional signal here to a two dimensional signal as, as in our input image, we will all also have these uh, ringing effects. So my idea would be to search for a square wave or something similar to a square wave in this uh, input image that is uh, the fence structure and then determine what is the direction of the square wave. We have one direction here that should be perpendicular to uh, the structure here. So the square wave is going in, in this direction and we have an opposite uh, square wave that is moving in, in this direction. So, and for each of these periodic structures, we would expect them to have uh, multiple uh, peaks or components that actually contribute to, to this pattern. So let's see if we can examine this in, uh, in Python and OpenCV. So I will just uh, switch to, uh, to a command line. You should be able to, to see it here. And uh, let's take a look at, at the code I um, I have written for, for this. I'll just enlarge the font a, a bit. Like that. Here we go. Okay. So just to Let's actually look at the results initially, and then uh, afterwards we can uh, see how it, it actually works. Um, so I would like to say uh, I have GNOME, and then I have stored everything in the output directory, and then let's just load one of the, the, of, yeah, the input image. In this case, the Im input image is this uh, image of a fence with a varied background. I loaded it in um, in grayscale. You could consider to use a different color space for, for this, where the fence might uh, be more visible. And inside this image, we can see the the structure um, of the fence in in this kind of uh, repeating pattern. So um, the first thing we'll do here is to use the fast Fourier transform on on this one to uh, determine all the frequency components of, of that image. And here I have just visualized the maximum of these uh, frequencies. And I have um, cut out a hole centered on the DC components, which will contribute to uh, the average of the image and um, slowly varying. Uh, things because it's not just the, the DC component, but also removed uh, a circular uh, center around that. But what we also can see is that we have multiple peaks around this uh, center, which is looking at something with uh, one distance and then two distances from the center and, and so on. So it's a bit different structure than what we saw with the uh, square wave but there is still this uh, pattern of, of things that are repeated in, in a certain way. Um, and all these peaks contain information about oscillations 
in a direction that is perpendicular to this one. So the peak here would correspond to waves uh, that are oriented in, in this direction. Um, and the distance between these two specify the crease frequency or the actual distance between the, the peaks. Um, so the idea here is now to be able to locate all the or some of these peaks that we find interesting and then uh, only maintain that part of, of the input image or of, of the spectral components of the input image and then uh, see uh, what comes out of that. The next step here is I have been uh, I have applied uh, some kind of a filter to detect peaks of a certain strength in this uh, Fourier, fast Fourier image, Fourier transform image. And then for all of the uh, detected peaks, I have uh, dilated that uh, peak to cover a region around that uh, uh, location. And what comes out is this uh, structure. So you can uh, clearly identify the, the same structure, but with all the noise uh, in the surroundings that has been uh, removed. So I now have a mask that I can <coughs> put onto the, the spectral um, decomposition of, of the image or the Fourier transform. And then I can transform it back again, which gives me this image. And the image here mainly only con or will most uh, mostly contain the periodic structures of the original image. <clears throat> Anything that is moving in different directions than what is specified by this uh, mask here has been taken out of that image. So if we have some gradients going up and up in, in this direction, they are simply uh, removed. And the final step I have done is to multiply this image with the original input image to get a sense of uh, what is where and are these uh, peaks actually aligned with what we want them to be aligned with. It gives us this image. And if we try to zoom in, we can actually see the fence structure in the structure that has been uh, highlighted. So all the holes in the fence are more or less um, removed or um, they at least they are very black uh, especially compared to, to the input image um, and finally we can compare the original image with this uh, filtered image and we can see there is a very nice match be between these two so what remains here will be to go down into this image and locate peaks in this uh, filtered image and figure out are they present in in some kind of uh, grid structure or not. Um, I will not cover that part in in this video, but uh, if if needed, I can discuss it afterwards. So this is what the algorithm looks like on the output of the generated images. So let's take a look at what the code actually looks like and and how it can be be run. So. Um, the code is given here and I'll just give you a, a brief overview of, of what happens uh, inside it. Initially I just load the, um, the libraries I, uh, I have used to, to implement this uh, with. That's NumPy and OpenCV. Then I load an image here and ensure that it's uh, present in a grayscale in the memory. That's the zero here. And then for the Fourier tra transform to, to work, or for the discrete Fourier transform to work, um, I convert the image to a floating point representation, and then I can forward it to, to the discrete uh, Fourier transform uh, here. And I ask it to provide us some uh, complex output from this, because then I can uh, invert the image back again. Uh, after having applied this uh, frequency filtering. And the last step here is this uh, FFT shift um, is done because uh, originally the image will be, or, or the Fourier transform 
will have a center in one of the corners. I think it's the, the top left corner. But this FFT shift moves the, um, yeah, how to say it, moves um, the center of the Fourier transform from that top corner down to the center of, of the image, which makes it much easier for us to actually visualize and understand what happens. Um, but it's just a, a wrapping up the of the image, so all the components are are still maintained in the image, but it, they just move to a new location. Next step is happening up here is just to uh, I, I need to know where the center of the image is, because the center of the image is where um, the main spike or peak is in in the Fourier transform, and I want to remove that. Um, yes. So to be able to remove that, I calculate the, the magnitude of the shifted uh, Fourier tra transform um, or the discrete Fourier transform. And as the discrete Fourier transform returns an area of um, or an image with uh, two color channels, one was representing the real values and one representing the imaginary values. I send it through this uh, magnitude command from OpenCV to calculate the magnitude of the frequency response for each of the pixels that is stored in this uh, shifted FFT variable um, or image. And that image, I draw a black circle uh, in the center with a radius of, of uh, 10 pixels. Um, that shades everything that is within 10 pixels of, of the of the center and that effectively removes all um, all dc components and slowly varying uh, components from the fft uh, in that image um, after that i go on to uh, threshold that uh, image to get a binary image and for this, I have chosen a, a, a threshold here. Uh, for this image, it seems like uh, 800,000 seems to be a good threshold, but it's um, it should be be decided from a case by case date uh, at uh, this uh, stage. Um, what I have seen until now is that I get a decent performance uh, when I have on the order of uh, 10 to 12 peaks in the image that has been detected. So I take this threshold and uh, comparing compares that with the shift of FFT or the magnitude of, of the FFT uh, using this NP grader function and uh, just locate the, the peaks down here. And then not to only have the center of the peaks, but to also um, take an area around each of the centers, I dilate this uh, segmented image, this sh shifted FFT peaks, and save that in a mask. And down here, I ensure that I have the right number of color channels um, to be able to apply the mask uh, afterwards. Um, and the idea with the mask is that it contains a lot of zeros, and only the regions I want to maintain there is uh, they contain a, a value of one and by using that approach i'm able to take the uh, discrete Fourier transform that is shifted apply the mask to that just by a point wise multiplication and then uh, we have this uh, shifted uh, image and i can go uh, back again uh, through the inverse fft shift and then finally the inverse discrete Fourier transform to get not our original image back, but our filtered image um, as we, we input. And the rest of the lines down here is uh, simply to write all the images uh, I showed you before uh, to an output directory. So we just save the input image, we save the shifted FFT image uh, scaled so that the maximum value in that will be 255 and we also s save the peak mask 
to visualize which peaks we have uh, taken with us. The filtered image and then the filtered image multiplied with the original input image. Like that. And then we are more or less uh, done. Of course you can do additional things at, at uh, this stage to actually search for the grid structure. But now at least we have uh, emphasized it uh, quite much. And to demonstrate that this uh, not only works on, on the supplied image, but uh, at least on one additional image, I will try to, to run it here. Like this. It's done. And uh, we can take a look at, at the input images here. So now it's a different fence image. This was acquired with artificial illumination. Uh, which uh, means that uh, the sense of the image is uh, showing up. And the uh, Fourier transform here is a bit more uh, distinct. The, and that's because uh, the pattern here fills, it, it has a shorter uh, distance between uh, adjacent uh, elements. That is, it contains more repetitions in the system. and. Um, that means we need to have a, a higher frequency and therefore also a larger distance be between the components here. I can uh, filter this um, like I just described before. And um, what we are seeing here is uh, the chosen peaks. And they coincide exactly on, on top of uh, the peaks we, we want to, to extract. And we can uh, make this uh, low pass filtering of, of the image and get a structure out like this. And we can see that everything that is part of the fence seems to light up and the holes in the fence are, are removed. Finally, we can uh, multiply this with um, the input image and uh, now the resolution might be too low. So, so it's actually difficult to see what uh, happens in, in the different locations, but, but we still have a sense of it. And the border of the fence up here becomes even uh, more visible. So finally, we can compare um, the output here with the input image. And we can see as long as we have this uh, grid structure, um, there seems to be a part of the fence. And in some of the regions, uh, that the, the output uh, gets uh, much uh, much less, but that's usually because we get outside this uh, range. I want to demonstrate one final thing and then uh, uh, stop uh, there. If I use a smaller uh, threshold for, for this uh, peak selection, um, then we'll detect uh, additional um, elements uh, in the image, and that can both be a good thing, but also would be a, a bad thing if we detect something that we don't want. So we have our original image here, we have the FFT, and now what has been changed is that I have lowered the threshold to accept these uh, values to a, a much lower value. So we have many more um, things that contribute to, to the pattern, and especially the ones corresponding to uh, horizontal lines and to the vertical lines play a quite big role uh, here. Um, and we can see how that actually has taken these elements uh, part of, of the structure. We still have this uh, fence structure emphasized uh, very nicely, maybe even better than before, but we also have some components, a horizontal component here and a vertical component over here that we might not have been that interested in, in maintaining. But there, at least there's something to, to play around with here. You can actually also go down here and say there's a, a shade in this part of the image and that, that actually corresponds to a stone uh, shading that part of, of the image. As you can see here, so there are no, actually no fence structure here. So, um, uh, given this uh, approach, there are some things to, to experiment with and figure out what thresholds to, to use. Um, and 
it will usually be some kind of compromise between what to maintain and what not to man maintain. And if you are able to uh, actually remove some of the elements that does not uh, contribute to the uh, grid structure, um, like the, the cross in here and the two dots uh, here, then you might be able to get even better um, results in, in the fence detection. Good. I hope that gave you a good overview of what is possible to achieve with uh, frequency filtering and one approach for, for doing that um, in uh, these uh, images of, of fences. Good luck with your project.